uh, if you look at the North American Free Trade Agreement, NAFTA, the only accurate words are North American. Uh, the uh, agreements have uh, very high protectionist elements in the interests of uh, uh, pharmaceutical corporations, media corporations, and so on. Uh, incredible patent rules, the kind that would have prevented the U.S. say from developing if they'd ever been instituted. Uh, uh, much of it has to, doesn't even have to do with trade at all. It has to do with investor rights. So the rights of uh, a corporation, let's say, to sue a country because it's taking away future profits, uh, things like that. Uh, and in fact, even what's called trade is pretty much a joke. So tr if you take a look at economists, they'll tell you trade has increased between the U.S. and Mexico. If you mean by that things are moving across borders, yes. Uh, but when GM produces parts in Indiana and sends them to uh, uh, Mexico to be assembled and sells the cars in Los Angeles, the things do move across borders. But that's interactions within a command economy. It's like uh, in the old Soviet Union, if, uh, if parts were uh, constructed somewhere in the Urals and uh, sent to Poland for assembly and sold in Leningrad, we didn't call it trade. Uh, it isn't. And that's, since corporations are tyrannies, they don't allow you to know what they're doing. The government could find out, but they prefer not to. There's only estimates, but the estimates are that maybe 40 or 50 percent of the cross-border interactions are internal to command economies. So it's not trade. It's not free trade. It's not, it, it, it has very little to do with trade altogether. It's mostly investor rights. And it's not agreements because people don't agree with it. And the effect is pretty harmful. And NAFTA, for example, is one of those rare trade pacts that's succeeded in harming the populations in all three uh, participating countries, the general populations, not the corporations. They're doing fine. Uh, Mexico, for example, has had the uh, slow, practically the slowest growth rate in Latin America since uh, NAFTA was, was uh, uh, established, which you read in the newspapers, it's an enormous success, you know, but if you look at the figures, it's quite different. Uh, the U.S. efforts to imp impose a free trade agreement for the Americas have so far failed. Free trade, of course, in quotes. Uh, there are now massive efforts underway to globalize this, the Trans-Pacific Partnership, Transatlantic Partnership. Uh, uh, we can't really talk about the details because these things are kept secret from the populations. And of course, not secret from uh, the hundreds of uh, corporate lobbyists and lawyers who are writing the details. But they have to be kept secret from the populations and for good reasons. Uh, that was done with NAFTA too. Uh, if people find out what's being done, they're not going to like it. So you have to have what's called fast track. That's the big debate now. Uh, we have to have Stalinist style uh, political decisions. If the government does something in secret, then it tells the parliament, you can say yes or no. And of course you have to say yes. And then we say, look, we are a democratic society. Uh, that's the debate that's going on right now, both uh, with the Pacific and the Atlantic. Again, it has almost nothing to do with trade in any classical sense. The tariffs are already quite low. Lowering them a little more would have almost no effect. But it, uh, the, the bits that have leaked out look like the standard uh, arrangements, the, uh, which are basically investor rights agreements of uh, you know, the populations are kind of incidental. They may gain something, they may not. But, uh, and that's uh, the current method of trying to regain as much control as possible over Latin America, but it's going to be hard. Uh, for one thing, a lot of their, uh, I should say, to the detriment of Latin America,